Alan Alda recently offered the commencement address at Carnegie Mellon University's 118th commencement ceremony. You may have seen an article in the paper about it. The popular actor is best known for his role as Hawkeye Pierce in that very popular television series, MASH. In his message, citing how easily rumor and innuendo circulate across the internet, he emphasized how quickly false information is accepted as norm and reality. He said, being able to know what is true and what is right is a lot harder now, harder than ever before. Now more than ever, you need the wisdom of a trusted partner or friend or mentor, someone who can remind you of what counts. Now more than ever, I think, you need to know who you are and what you believe in. So allow me to rephrase four points that are important, I think, for us to embrace from his statement. First of all, truth is important. Second of all, it is harder to know what's right and true than ever before. Third, you need people in your life who will tell you the truth, who will speak truth into your life, and who will remind you what is truth. And fourth, you need to know the truth about yourself and what you believe. I wonder what Jesus would say to Alan Alda's comments. Wish we could ask him. Oh wait, he already did address this topic. Jesus said to the Jews who believed him, if you hold to my teachings, you are really my disciples. And then you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. Today is Confirmation Sunday at Ingemar Church. At our 1115 service today, Pastor Diane and I and the adult leaders of the Confirmation program and the parents of each young person, each of us will lay hands upon the heads of 14 young people who come forward here as they kneel. We will lay hands on their heads as an act of blessing. They will be received as adult, as full members of Ingemar Church. These young people have met every Sunday morning for nine months, learning about matters of faith as they prepared for today. They learned some theology, which is an academic word for how God works. They learned some ecclesiology, which is an academic word for how the church works. They learned about God's love and Jesus' sacrifice and the Holy Spirit's guidance. They learned about grace and hope and forgiveness and acceptance. They learned about a God, our God, who knows their name, the number of hairs on their heads, and loves them unconditionally. And they learned truth. All important truth that will sustain them and set them free from the falsehood of life. If they were in the 10 a.m. service when Wendy Weaver delivered part of the morning message on Youth Sunday, they learned that when God speaks, he whispers because he's always close to us. But when Satan speaks, he screams and shouts because he is far away from us and is trying to drown out the assuring truths that God speaks into our hearts. Truths like, I will always love you. I will never leave you. I will always be with you. They learned the Apostles' Creed, a deeply profound statement of truth and belief that all Christians have in common. And if you don't know it, you should learn it because it reminds us of what we believe. In fact, when, we were, when Diane was leading us through the Apostles' Creed today, I was looking out to see how many of you were, were reciting the words and not necessarily looking at the screens, and you did very well. I'm very proud of you. But I'd like to share it with you but I don't want you to recite it back to me. I want you to just listen. 
Because one of the issues that I have with liturgy and things that we do on a, on a regular basis is that sometimes we do them so fast, so quickly, so much as a matter of routine that we don't often think about the content that's involved. I will pause at the end of each phrase so that you can think about what was just stated. I believe in God the Father Almighty. You get the impact of that? He is Father. He is Almighty. Maker of heaven and earth. And in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. Who was conceived by the Holy Spirit. Who was born of the Virgin Mary. who suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, buried, but on the third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick, the living, and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, I believe in the Holy Catholic Church, that is the Church Universal, the Church of Jesus Christ in the world. The word Catholic means universal. I believe in the communion of saints, the fact that believers in Jesus Christ will gather, be reunited in the kingdom of heaven. I believe in the forgiveness of sins, that Christ forgives sin, past, present, future. I believe in the resurrection of the body, that when we die one day we will receive new bodies. believe in life everlasting, that we will live forever. Amen. You should commit this creed to memory because it's a quick reminder of what Christians believe and it reminds you of what you believe. Sometimes someone, this happened to me in college, someone might ask, what do Christians believe? And you could tell them. Sometime you may say to yourself, I'm not exactly sure what I believe. And this creed that you have committed to memory could come to mind and you could remember. These truths are stated in Scripture and supported by songs that we sing, hymns and praise songs as well. We build our lives on these truths. We stand on them. Truth, this is God's world. He created it. He sustains it. He established its order. He is in control. Truth, Jesus is God's one and only Son whom God sent to the world to suffer and die for the sins of humanity so that we would not die eternally for our sin. Truth, the church is God's idea to sustain and strengthen the believers who attend through worship and through teaching and through fellowship and by serving side by side. 
Truth, Jesus is not dead. Jesus is alive. He was dead, but was miraculously say, raised from death, real dead as a doornail death, to life, and he appeared to the disciples. Truth, Jesus dwells in us through the power of the Holy Spirit. Jesus, through the Holy Spirit, does life with us, trying to guide us and to lead us to blessings and to the abundant life. On the day of Pentecost, the birthday of the church, which we celebrated last week, the Holy Spirit descended upon the disciples and the Holy Spirit became available to us. And that Holy Spirit lives in us and helps us to find our way to God and to find our way away from evil. But we are independent people and we can decide to resist the nudgings of the Holy Spirit. But still, God is using his Spirit to draw you closer to him, to draw us closer to him. To the Jews who had believed him, Jesus said, If you hold to my teaching, you are really my disciples, then you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. Truth, Jesus is our Lord. He is the Lord, the Lord of the universe, the King of kings, and the Lord of lords. There is no other name above his. He is the name above all names. So some of you may wonder, how does following Jesus make us free exactly? Because it seems that if following Jesus means following a bunch of rules and regulations that prevent us from doing whatever we want to do, and we want to experience everything that's out there, we don't want any limits. We don't want any restrictions upon our life. And to us, that's freedom. But subjecting ourselves to everything simply because it's there is not necessarily in our best interest. We are free to drink unsafe water, but that's not good for us. That's not in our best interest. We are free to dump acid on our skin or expose ourselves to too much sun, but it's not good for us. We are free to sin boldly, but it will eventually adversely affect us, which is why God tries to lead us away from sin. God, the one who created the universe and all of us, offers us guidelines and advice to live by so that we may experience the very best, the very best that life has to offer. Jesus, God's Son, provides an example for us to follow and teachings that further clarify God's instruction so that we may live life to the fullest. The Holy Spirit, the presence of God that lives in us and accompanies us 24-7 leads us and guides us so that we may discover abundant living. We can live that life if we keep Christ at the center of our lives. Now most of us have heard some or all of this before. So then why does it seem so hard, so impossible, so uninviting? Because we're stubborn. Because we think we know better than God what is best for us. Because we don't want to be told because we possess a rebellious nature. Because we are not perfect, and sin dwells in us as well. It's a part of our nature. And so when we are tempted, that which tempts us resonates with this rebellious, sinful nature inside of us. And a bit of a skirmish occurs, and one of two things happen. Either we resist because our character is strong and we yield to the Holy Spirit leading us away from sin, or we give in. We succumb to the temptation and we rebel and we commit sin. But hopefully we always, always, always are able to resist temptation. So then what? Well, no one is perfect. No one always, always, always resists temptation. 
So one of two things will happen. We will regret what we did, recognize our mistake, and come back to God, realizing that he does know what is best, or we will drift further and further away from God. And the more we drift, the further away from God we become. But hopefully you won't drift. But everyone drifts at some time or another. So what's critical when you do drift is that you don't drift too far before you remember that you belong to God. Remember the prodigal son? God wants you back. And God is always waiting for you. And God always has you in his heart. You know, today it's harder than ever before to know what is true to know what is right. Some will say that there's no such thing anymore as absolute truth. Some will say all truth is relative. I have witnessed the shift in our thinking in our culture. And I've heard phrases like, just because it's true for you doesn't mean it's true for me. And I understand the logic of such a statement. I simply disagree. If you hold your hand into a flame, it will burn. If you stick a pin into your finger, it will hurt. If you hit your thumb with a hammer, it will hurt. And you might yell, and you might shake it. All of that is truth. Truth for you, and truth for me. Truth. God created the universe, including us. Truth. God loves you, Jesus died for you. Truth, God always has you in his heart and he is always willing to welcome you back into his arms. Truth is important, as important as it has ever been. It is harder to know truth than ever before and we all need people in our lives who will tell us the truth, who will speak truth into our lives who will remind us as to what is truth. A parent, a teacher, a youth leader, a pastor, a good friend, a trustworthy adult, a mentor. You need to know the truth about life, about yourself, and what you believe. I believe in God in his son Jesus Christ, and in the guiding presence of the Holy Spirit. I believe that God loves me and that God always wants what's best for me, always. That's what I believe. That's what Christians believe. So may we always remember. You will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. Amen.